stuff that we get to talk about. Uh, let's start with you, because you have had so much stewing in your brain. Yeah. Let's go there first. I think, for me, one of the things that's kind of just been sat there and just kind of, just in sort of that voice in the back of your head, mm -hmm. is the idea of kind of direction with things. And mm -hmm. not to say that we don't have direction, not to say that there's nothing in place. It's just one of those where I think my head kind of likes the idea of this is the path that we're kind of following and this is what it is that we're kind of striving to have that pathway that kind of where we're heading and what we're kind of working through and I liked that night interview yeah. so that that whole process of laying down that 10 steps of this is what we are this is what makes us both culturally mm -hmm. so what we have as our ethos and then how that expands out to that greater kind of this is what we put out and this is what we want to kind of have as our day to day. Yeah, this is what we were striving to kind of look towards and that, that pathway that's kind of achieving that. So I created this at the rowing studio that I started. Okay. Um, and it was, to me, the document that defined who we were. Yeah. That to me still holds true as what I stand for and what I believe yeah. we as a company will stand for. And the the outline of where we're going is going to be very different from what that talks yeah. about, right? That is very much a like, who are we? What do we care about? Yeah. For me and having built this, the key was to bring people to rowing who had zero exposure to it beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like what we stand for is A, the furtherment of this profession. Yeah. Coaching is extremely important to me. The profession of coaching and developing good coaches globally is something that mm. you know, while we have our niche and the ability to work in rowing, we can also influence that coaching role. Yeah. And I think that that's something that you and I have tied closely together on is that desire to create better coaches and better people yeah. through that. I like the idea that good stands for something. It's mm -hmm. not just we are good at this. Yeah, it's yeah. We are good at this because and yeah. there's, a, there's a reason that sits and underpins all of that. Just, just the general what is good? What, what does that mean? Yeah. And how do we kind of use that to then impart to others? How good is good? Yeah. yeah. And what I the, like that. the biggest statement kind of becomes from it at the same time. The maximum amount of information someone's going to retain when you tell them something is good is two points. That's it. Mm. As soon as you go above those two points, something slips yeah. and they forget something else. Right. So that if you're teaching a technique and you want them to focus on arms, you don't want those arms to bend, that one thing you've got to ingrain is do not bend those arms. It's the limits yeah. to coaching, right? Exactly. The ability to produce effective cues. Yeah that don't overwhelm and also instantly make sense. Yes. Yes. And it, that to me is where we have made our bones and where to me everything, well, let me step back. A, I care very much about empathy yep. and that being something that is at the focal point of everything that we do. Yeah. There is not enough empathy that takes place in the role of coaching, whether it is us delivering to athletes or us delivering to coaches. Anybody, yeah. There is so little empathy that is placed on understanding what somebody else is going through in their moment. Yeah. Being willing to adjust your format for that person. Yeah. And this comes back to what you were talking about, that there's a capacity load that somebody can take. What I found particularly interesting in what we've done is, is through the academy, it's purposely broken up yeah. to create opportunities for you to go learn, grow, practice yeah. before coming back and moving on. Yeah. And you can always tell that people who have actually taken that to heart are the ones who come back and produce a killer video submission. Yeah. The people who don't are the ones who it's a carbon copy. It's a, yes. you've told me this is what you want to see. Yeah. Therefore, 
I will just regurgitate that information and yes. I will just put a little bit of me into yeah. that, but I won't expand or I won't show further research and understanding behind why those things are being looked at. They don't internalize it. No. And those are the people that instantly fail. Yeah. I can, in the first <laughs> minute and a half of somebody's video, I can figure out if they're gonna pass or fail. Sure. Yes. A few people may have surprised me, but for the most part, I can tell you who's going to fail and pass within the first minute and a half yeah. just by the way that they're speaking. Yeah. Because it tells me if they've internalized the information or if, as you said, they are simply regurgitating, yeah. which I'm not interested in. So I don't want a bunch of carbon copies of me running around. I want people to take this information and make it theirs. Yeah. I think the beautiful thing talking about the academy that, that I've seen and I've experienced with guys that do repost videos and do repost information, just put it out there and, and say, okay, this, this is what I currently look like, this is what I currently kind of have, is it's created a standard. Mm. And never before have I seen a standard. There's never been a, this is how we teach whatever element. These are the drills that we can utilize to help create better movement or create better capacity or whatever it is that you're looking to improve. Yep. There's never been that standard before. And that's always been that kind of, for me, when I I want to refer to something, I always refer to a standard. Right. And that, I think, is the big thing that I like about the way the academy is structured, that it has those key bits of information that stand out as, this is what you need to achieve. Yeah. Without this, forget pacing, forget stroke rate, forget all that clinical information, the stuff that, yes, will come with time, will come with practice, but doesn't need to doesn't need to be drilled at this point in time. It can right. be brought in at a much kind of later date once we understand the fundamentals and once we've got those standards yeah. in place and in practice for ourselves as well. Yeah. Um, and I like that that's kind of the way it's structured with all the modular elements and everything kind of put kind of behind it as as information, yeah, as the stuff you kind of go away and start to kind of utilize and start to, to build that coaching base, that good element for yourself at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so what, all right, so for you seeing that definition of a mission vision yeah. and a path to the future is important. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's, yeah, I think it's exactly that. I think it's that idea of, the idea of the process. Mm -hmm. What does that process look like? What can I bring to that process? What can I have as a as an input? You know, where does that? Where do I sit in that process? Do I just regurgitate your information, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or do I go and I look at the way in which I deliver it and the methods in which I utilize and combine and create something that, again, someone that may have read yours or looked at yours goes understand it but actually I need it to be a little bit more informative, I need to be a bit more broken down, I need to have a bit more research behind it and yeah. go along that pathway instead of myself. Yeah. I think especially as we're getting started where where you can have the greatest impact is on the athlete side and a stat because that honestly for me has been the workouts have taken a back seat to the coaching. The coaching of coaches. Right, <laughs> coaching of coaches versus yeah. the coaching of athletes. That has taken a backseat to the academy work because I, I can taste the way that the academy work breathes itself out into the world. And so in order to develop that, the workouts took a backseat. Sure. Uh, the first year and a half of our existence was all workouts. Yeah. Right? It was... I spent, I was committed to building cycles all year long. And so I built cycles for our whole first year. And we've just kind of used those ever since. It's in dire need of refreshing, of some new blood, of new ideas, new ways of explaining things, as well as somebody to guide the process for our athletes. And I think that is why this is a great, start for both of us is because our our community needs that yeah and i haven't been able to give the time to them to do that therein lies what i'm hoping you bring to the table is challenging our status quo challenging what we have done so far 
and saying, okay, cool, that exists here, yeah. right? And it it doesn't even have to look like like this. Yeah. Yeah. It can be this. It can be this. Like it, whatever it needs to be, it can. Yeah. yeah. In the way that we work, there there is no room for ego, and there is no room for something to be like so protected precious so yeah. precious that it can't be changed that it can't just completely be blown up because we realize that things have changed you can only have the conversation so many times before your brain needs to start thinking i wonder if there's something that i'm missing here why are we, why are we doing it the way right. we're doing it why aren't we challenging it and looking at it in a completely different kind of methodology correct yeah. it's very much kind of driven by the idea that we want, and all of us want, progression. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. It doesn't matter if it's erg focused, if it's life focused, whatever it is. I read an article that Shane's produced, or I've seen a video that John's talked to me about, and he's talked about this idea of can I play with my kids? Right. Can I get up and down the flight of stairs without getting out of breath? Can I do all those things? Yeah. The important things. Yeah. The exactly. things that really the matter. That make the biggest difference. I see there being an immense value to starting to put out a daily free workout on our blog. Yeah. I think there's a huge advantage to letting people dip their toe in the water yeah. with, here's just, here are the basic, like here's just a basic workout. We don't need to send you links to videos. Yeah. We don't need to send you like, just come taste it, right? Like come taste our workouts, see what you think. That's that's one. Two is the, the drill wad idea. Yeah. Like somebody just, they don't even really care about this thing. Yeah. They just want to come get better at it and they really don't care to spend even two hours a week on it. Yeah. So what about two 20 minute sessions a week? Maybe that's manageable, yeah. challenging and manageable for them. Yeah. What really stood out to me, uh, perfect timing on it, but were the last two posts that we made this week. Okay. The community one, yeah, and then the the picture of the just the seat and the handle on the earth. Yeah. The response to that was one of the best responses we've had to a post in a long time. Okay. And to me, that the the micro of what was said yeah. is direct insight for us into how people associate with what we're doing. Yeah. And I think there are far more people that associate with that message than associate with rowing or associate with the programming or associate with their times or their scores. Yeah. If we sp spent a half a day dissecting just the three micro paragraphs yeah. that were written in that post, and then the follow-up post, which was about finding your community, yeah. those two things together, I think, will give us, will show a very healthy response to what people really feel. Yeah. and. Up to this point, we've often tried to deliver what we think people need. Yeah. And I think we haven't done a good enough job of trying to fulfill what the feelings people have behind this and nurturing the feelings that they have. That, that original statement of, of empathy. Right. That understanding of what would you need from me? Right. Where, where do you want me to, where do you want to be? Yeah. What, what, what is it that's going to help you now, tomorrow, next month? next year, like where's that, mm. where's that process gonna take you? This is the community, how do we fit that community? Right. It's not that, it's, it's how do we kind of engage with that, mm. but at a bigger level. We have this amazing ability to tap into what people are thinking simply by reading the comments in our <laughs> yeah. YouTube channel, yeah. because people tell us exactly what they think. Yeah. They are already there saying, hey, I'd love to see more of this. The one thing that I know we need to be doing more of on YouTube is guided workouts. Sure. The comments all say more, please, like yeah. give us more of these. We could do one of those a day, and if we could put out a guided workout a day, I think our YouTube channel would just like beep, 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 beep. Yeah. That interest level for people is there because, and the comments are never like, oh, this crushed my soul, like, thank you so much. I just, you know, we this is- We can do that if you want. I'm, right. pretty, I'm pretty sure I can, yeah, right. we can put something together right. between the two of us. But yeah. the, major, the majority of the comments on those videos are, oh my God, I just got a concept too. I have no idea how to use it. This video is perfect. I watch, I've used it every day for the past three weeks. This same workout, they just like literally hit play just and just sit down on the machine and just follow. Yeah. That 
is exactly what we should be doing, is just have somebody show them how to do it. And that's exactly what those follow-alongs do. It uh, doesn't just have to be a soul-crushing 30 minutes. Right. It's actually, let's make the most of what you can give us. Yeah. yeah. And we'll pull up. I think what I like the idea of is putting that, that idea of like a bank mm -hmm. of videos or a bank of kind of content there. So time dependent people can just dip their toe in and can go yeah okay i've got no let's give it a go let's see what it looks like right if i enjoy it great i might try a 20 minute workout in a few weeks if i don't okay i've not lost anything right just 10 minutes yeah. yeah how can i maximize the both the audible and the visual sure the audible is i, I think there's huge upside to the audible development yeah. that nobody has even tried yeah. yeah yeah i think there's there's potential for like podcast mm -hmm. i think there's potential for alexa skills yeah. to be able to develop audio that goes that ties into what we're doing yeah it's simply a how do we make that piece of the puzzle fit yeah yeah so other than that like that's that's how this whole thing started was let's show because text isn't working Blog articles are great for descriptive things. Our, you know, one of our, our most effective, well, our highest viewed blog article is the calorie calculator. Okay. That is consistently, day in and day out, month in and month out, year in and year out, that is the number one visited blog article yeah. that we have. We're going to own everything up and down the stream yeah. for how to educate on this machine and beyond. Right. There, there will yeah. come a point when we need to go find you in skier format, yeah, with Jane, yeah. in <laughs> bike, in, yeah. and begin that development process. But what we want is as much up and downstream of that as possible, which is exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. How do we take what we did with the academy? To me, the next step, and this is just where my brain has gone, the, the next step to me is a call it a, a micro franchise model. Yeah. It's how do you build a rowing club? Yeah. Here's the handbook. Here's the programming. Here's how you train your coaches. Yeah. Here's the whole package for, yeah. you know, five to $10,000. Yeah. Drop in, go. you go like, here's, here's the plan. You just have to, you know, figure out your space. Yeah. But these are the systems you need to have for that you get to train five coaches and they all come through the academy, you know, we'll, we'll make sure that they become certified at the yeah. end. Well, I mean, only they can make sure they become certified, but we <laughs> offer them the path to certification. Yeah. So all of your coaches will be teaching the same methodology. We will be teaching you the pr how to program. In fact, we'll give you the programming. Mm -hmm. You can fly the dark horse flag. Yeah. You know, you can be, you can give it your own name or you can be a dark horse affiliate. affiliate. Yeah, right. Yeah. That is next step Big leveling picture. up. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Open your own rowing studio. Yeah. And everything in between. Building that spectrum in between, yeah. Everything in between. And that comes down to, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the big vision. Yeah. The things I can guarantee you that need to be a piece of what we do going forward is spending more time surprising and delighting the people that we already serve. Yeah surprising them with new forms of content, surprising them with new ideas, surprising them with personal touches, with access to us that hasn't been, been there before, with things like personal coaching that you know, people have been asking for but we haven't been able to provide. Things that will really make that community feel special because yeah. they are. They're the ones that have been here from the beginning yeah. and are willing to invest in us. Yeah. And so the investment back into our base is really important. Yeah. Um, and with that as well, will come the investment into the community at large yeah. because it will only advantage the, everybody. Yeah. The next thing that I want to talk about is how we are actually pushing through the body. Yeah. To do that, we need to focus on that compression position. We call that the catch. Yeah. Okay? 
So that compression position is up at the front. It is the most important part of the stroke. If we don't understand how to get into a good catch position, it's impossible to drive, to, to actually apply force to the machine. So I want you to follow along with me here. So I'm going to kind of walk you through it and show you simultaneously. So number one, hands wide on the handle. Number two, elbows extended. Okay. Number three, shoulders reaching. Yeah. Now I want your head and neck relaxed. So just give me a nice relaxed head nod. Good. Now from here, go ahead and set the handle down and keep your position. I want you to take your hands and roll your shoulders down so that your lats get tight. All right, so roll down in tension. Good. Do me a favor, take your right hand, grab your left lat, and now tension your lat. Without pulling back, roll down. Good. And make sure that elbow stays extended. Good. You feel it tight? Okay, now keep that position. Take your right arm, put it out, and do the same thing. Good. You feel that tension? You need to do that every single stroke. So right before you take the stroke, those lats need to be tight. Body open. Even more. Lay back, lay back. There we go. Reset. Go. Much better. Reset. Lats. Go. Do you feel how you're putting more power on the handle? All right, I'm gonna take off your training wheels a little bit, and I'm gonna take away the pause. I'm gonna let you just settle in to now a rhythmic stroke. I want you to take 20 to 30 strokes, thinking about what everything that we just did, now we're just taking the pause away. Don't let it speed up, continue to just move, Nice and slow and controlled, and just establish that new pattern. She say that she a wanderlust, but she ain't seen the world so much to do at 21. You feel invincible, so hard to find someone to trust. She's still a daddy's girl, she wanna be an actress and a singer like Athena. And she a movie buff, but she ain't seen breakfast at Tiffany's a breakfast club. That's just before her time, so hard to keep a conversation. When your mind's on vacation, you got pretty 